Brown Chicks. I want to bring in Congressman Dave Cicilline, who is a Democrat from Rhode Island. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for coming in here. So what do you think? Is Perry right? But Or, or can $12 million and, and the voice that, that Michael Bloomberg has, the attention that he's able to get, say, going on Meet the Press, can it at least change the conversation? Well, I, I think Perry's right that this is where the American people already are. But what this, these ads will do is activate people in those 13 states to reach out to their member of Congress, their member of the Senate and urge them to adopt this common sense approach to reducing gun violence in this country. And, you know, I think the NRA is doing what they would expect, that everyone expects it that they would do. Frame this to be about Mayor Bloomberg. This is really not about me. This is about an organization, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, that reflects the view of the vast majority of the American people, including gun owners, about universal background checks. So it's really about avoiding the issue, which is most Americans support universal background checks to make sure that criminals and those that are seriously mentally ill do not have access to a dangerous firearm that's you know supported by a overwhelming majority of Americans including gun owners what the NRA by making this about Mayor Bloomberg is talking about the sugary drinks and talking about government intervening in your lives to avoid focusing on the real underlying policy here. But hopefully this expenditure of money by mayors against illegal guns will activate you know, people in those states to reach out to their members of Congress and urge them to vote for this common sense gun safety legislation. Well, you were a mayor too in Providence, so you know a little bit about this. And, and uh, the argument that you make is, is essentially what we heard from Michael Bloomberg yesterday. Let me play a little clip from him. If 90% of the public wants something and their representatives vote against that, common sense says they are going to have a price to pay for that. Will they, though? I mean, we've seen that, that votes don't always come uh, directly out of public opinion yeah. polls. I think this time is different. We saw 20 first grade children slaughtered because of gun violence in a classroom in this country and six adults. If this event in Newtown is not enough to cause, co cause Congress to do something about the, the, the scourge of, of gun violence in this country, shame on us. So I think this is different. Million Mom March, Mayors Against Illegal Guns, Demand a Plan. There's a lot of organizations that are activating people all across this country to insist on action by Congress. I think. If I guess the question is what action at this point? Because it seems as though uh, those who are intimately involved in this uh, maybe knew from the very beginning that the assault weapons ban was going to be very tough, and, and Harry Reid has taken it out of the bill, in spite of the fact that, that Dianne Feinstein was obviously very upset about it. Was there a miscalculation there, do you think, by pushing the assault weapons ban so hard, knowing it was a long shot at best? Does whatever happen, even if they get, say, background checks, does it look like they've lost? No, I mean, I think, look, we have to push hard on all of these efforts. One, fix the broken background check system and make sure that we close loopholes so criminals and people who are seriously mentally ill cannot buy a gun. Close sale loopholes so when someone has their license revoked as a licensed gun dealer, their inventory is not deemed their personal collection and they can sell it without background checks. Fix those things. Be sure that people are being properly entered into the national background check system. But at the same time, we have to, we should be working hard to ban the presence of weapons of war, assault weapons and high capacity ammunition in the neighborhoods of our cities and towns. There is no reason for that. So I think we need to be pushing all of these. I haven't given up on the assault weapons ban. I recognize that it's going to be hard to do. Do, but we should put before Congress and we should get a vote on all these. We will in the Senate, it looks like. Um, I think people expect that. We can enact what are really common sense gun safety measures that will keep communities self safe, that respect the right of people to own and possess a firearm, and I think that's what we should be working for. And there's no doubt on an issue like background checks, the polls are wildly in the favor of getting that through. Let me talk to you a little bit about what the Supreme Court, though, is going to be talking about. Two big cases on gay marriage. You're one of the first openly gay members of Congress. Uh, you know, and you have someone like Howard Schultz, who, again, also has a megaphone in a sort of a similar way that Michael Bloomberg does. But can that influence what happens there? Can public opinion, and what has clearly been a change, not just in public opinion, but in the numbers of members of Congress, the number of political figures we have seen turn around on this issue, uh, 
Does the Supreme Court listen as well? I think there is no question that what is happening in our country is going to weigh in kind of the way the Supreme Court looks at this issue. The, the country has really moved so far in, in terms of supporting marriage equality, both in states uh, in our country, in uh, elected leadership, in business leadership. And I think it makes a difference when the Supreme Court is trying to decide kind of what, it, what they embrace in terms of the breadth of their decision. Um, what's happening in the country, this is one of those examples where I think the American people are way ahead of the judiciary. Um, they have moved beyond this. People embraced marriage equality. I think the most recent poll says people under 30 support marriage equality by 81 percent. So I think people have really recognized that this is a question of fundamental fairness, of basic notions of equality, and the Supreme Court has the responsibility to catch up to that. Congressman David.